Good morning, Shepherd of the Hills Church. And if you're joining us online, welcome as well. Let's stand and worship this morning. to community and as we are in community that is how we are to build his church as he has called us in the disciples and the great commission and sending us out it is not alone that we do that so as we build God's kingdom here we do it as the church collective come set your rule and reign in our hearts again increase in us we pray Unveil why we're made Come set 
set our hearts ablaze with hope Like wildfire in our very souls Holy Spirit, come invade us now We are your church We need your power in us We seek your kingdom desire your kingdom to be here in this room, in this community, in our country, in our world, and in our hearts. You sent Jesus to proclaim that the kingdom has come, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of forgiveness. We thank you, Lord, for being in charge that we're not, that we don't have to worry about controlling everything. We don't have to worry about being perfect to be saved because you bring your kingdom, your kingdom of grace and mercy. Lord, help us worship you this morning with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Help us turn our hearts to you, our minds to you. We pray that you would shape us and mold us to be more and more like you. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. This morning, we hear from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where Paul shares about um, 
Paul shares about Jesus uh, showing himself after the resurrection. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Caiaphas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle. Because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believe. Paul says, it is by the grace of God that I am what I am. Is that not so true? It's by the grace of God that you and I are what we are, children of God. But yet we know we turn against him, we do things that are against his will, so let's spend some time in confession, just bow our heads and admit our sinfulness. Heavenly Father, We know so many times we disobey your word. We do things that we know are wrong. We do things that we know are hurtful to others, to our siblings or our spouse or our coworkers, to our family. We know we have secret things that we would be appalled if others knew about. But Lord, you know about them. And you call us to repentance. You call us to do a complete turnaround to flee from sin and run towards you. Lord, may you purge the sin from each one of us. You promise if we confess our sins that you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So now we pray for your mercy, for your grace. And we give you thanks that because of our confession, you can proclaim forgiveness to each one of us. Forgiveness that you earned through blood, through spears in your hands and feet, through a spike into your side, through a crown of thorns, through being nailed to a cross. It is through your blood, through your life, Jesus, that we are saved, that we are forgiven. May we never take that lightly. We give you thanks for your love and your mercy for each one of us. Amen. As we come together as the family of God, we celebrate his presence here with us. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. We'll receive, uh, we'll distribute the, the elements from the front first for the two middle sections, then we'll move to the side for the side sections. Once you receive uh, the elements, we encourage you to step down uh, towards the side 
and take your time receiving the elements uh, in front of the steps. Yes. 
encourage you to turn to the back of your worship folder and follow along to the message outline there. How many of you have started reading the Bean Challenge? All right, encourage you to get the book on your way out if you have not started. It is a great book. Um, Sean and I and the one child we have left at home have been reading it together at breakfast. It's a great thing to do as a couple, as a family, Um, If you don't have anyone else in your household, I encourage you to do it with a friend. Do it with a family member. You could call them up. You could FaceTime them daily. It's a great thing to do together, to read together, reflect each day. Um, You should be up to at least day five. Um, Today we start uh, committing to community, which is uh, readings 6 through through 12 for this week. So committing to community. Last week, Pastor Steve started the Being Challenge, and he talked about our focus on keystone habits and how when we focus on the keystone habits of Jesus, it's going to spill over into other areas of our life. But let's start with a little experiment. Let's see how you guys do. So we have a line on the left. Those of you at home as well as in the room, you should be seeing this on the screen. There's a line to your left, and then there are three lines to your right, A, B, or C. Let's see how smart you guys are. To see, tell me which line is the same length as the one on the left. How many of you say A? Okay, no one. How many of you say B? Wow, you guys are a smart crowd. How many of you say C? All right, everyone says C. You are correct. It is C. The crazy thing is, um, I read about this in James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, that when they did this experiment in the 1950s, it was a little bit rigged. See, when people would come in off the street to a group of 10 people, there would be some plants in there, some actors or or people who were told to say the wrong answer. So they were studying how much people are influenced by others. When there was 10 people in the room and only one or two said A instead of C, the people who came in off the street who didn't know there were actors in the room uh, would not be changed, would not be influenced. But each time they added more and more people saying the wrong answer, five to six to seven, the more the people in the room who didn't know what was going on would cave. When it got up to eight people in the room who were saying A, 
The other two that had no idea what was going on, 75% of them would cave and follow the crowd. 75, I saw some of you like make crazy faces like, how dumb are they? Uh, They would cave and say the wrong answer because the eight in the room were saying A. Isn't that crazy? Sometimes we are influenced by others. We don't even realize how much we're impacted by those around us. We care about what other people think, right? When you go on Amazon to buy a book, how many of you read the reviews first? Okay, many of you. I recently bought a a book that uh, had 5,000 reviews. One of the number one on the New York Times bestsellers list. It had four and a half out of five stars. It's a horrible book. It's garbage. The guy was completely abusing scripture, completely misinterpreting scripture, got rid of hell, made Adam and Eve pretty much disappear. It's a horrible book. But evidently, 5,000 people thought it was a great book. Probably because it was what their itching ears want to hear. When we go to a new restaurant or we go to a new hotel, you might look at uh, TripAdvisor or you might look at Google reviews, um, those sort of things, or Yelp, right? Oftentimes we care about what other people think, but the problem is what if what everybody else is saying, what if it's wrong? That's a problem, right? I'm afraid a lot of people in the world, and even Christians, have moved away from getting their direction from Jesus the Savior, God in the flesh, and moved to getting their direction by the world, by those around them. Instead of caring what God's Word says and what Jesus says, they get their direction for their faith, for their decisions, more by what's popular. Most people would rather be wrong with the crowd than be right by themselves. Isn't that sad? Right? Remember junior high, moms and dads? You know, all we cared about was fitting in, was being on the inside. So in this 40-day challenge, this being challenge, we're going to look at not the world's ways, we're going to look at Jesus' ways, his keystone habits, and how he calls us to live. And as we do, as we aim at him, as we focus on him, those keystone habits are going to spill out into other areas of our life as well. Pastor Craig Rochelle, who leads a very large church in Oklahoma City, he actually leads many churches all across America. I think they have about 40 sites across America. Everybody hears Craig on Sunday at all those different sites. He's a great author, he's a great preacher, and he's very disciplined. Craig adds a new habit, a new discipline to his life every year. And he actually gets beyond, you know, January 15th when he adds a new habit. And he keeps the habits from the past years. And he writes this, Small habits done consistently over time produce major results. Some of us who have some good habits, we can recognize that, right? Exercise or just being outside or eating healthy. We realize how those things spill over. We don't have a lot of bamboo plants in Wisconsin, But I learned this week that bamboo plants spend about five years building their root system. Five years before they grow much above the ground at all. And then when they get a really strong root system and they're just growing slowly up above... All of a sudden, they, um, once their root system is really strong and deep, they can shoot up to 90 feet in six weeks. They will grow that strong, that big, that fast. We want these habits to build a strong root system 
for our spiritual life. Looking to Jesus about his spiritual habits, his keystone habits. Keystone habits are habits that we form that unintentionally carry over into other areas of our life. They spill over into other areas. And today we focus on committing to community. Our key verse for this whole series is from Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, and it says this, Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Unforced rhythms of grace. How when we commit to rhythms, habits that help us in our walk with Jesus, it's going to help other things as well. So we remember today that Jesus committed to community. He had his 12 disciples. He had his followers, his apostles. He had this small group that committed to him and he to them. Now, if anyone could have gone through life alone, could have accomplished great things in the world alone, you would think it would have been Jesus. But he... Even he needed a close group of friends. We saw that at the Garden of Gethsemane before he's going to the cross on Good Friday. He asked his friends to come with him and pray for him as he prays. And he gets rather disappointed by them because they all fall asleep. Have you ever been disappointed by your friends? It happens, doesn't it? Where they disappoint us. But that doesn't mean we should never be with friends again. He calls us to be in community. When you think of community, normally in America today, we think of a geographical area. You might think Greenville or Hortonville or the Fox Valley, right? When you think of the word community. But biblically, the word community is more about relationships, about your close group of friends. So, Jesus came to share that community, to be with us. And he showed it most boldly on the cross when he paid for your sins and mine so that we could have a relationship with him. You are not meant to be alone. Jesus came for us, and we are here for each other. My wife loves to tell our kids, cast your net wide. What she's saying is don't just have one or two friends because you never know when that one or two friends are going to move away or, you know, that relationship is going to explode or something. You need a broad uh, group of friends. Cast your friendships wide. Don't, uh, don't judge other people. Have a lot of friends. I think that is a good word, and that is what Jesus is talking about. Cast your friendships wide. Jesus said, or God said in Genesis 2, it's not good for men to be alone, for man to be alone. All the guys in the room say amen, right? We're glad, we're happy for women. We're glad we're not in this alone. Um, we need each other. Cigna did an interesting survey and research. This was before COVID-19. And they found out that 61% of Americans are, experience loneliness on a consistent basis, on a frequent basis. 61%, wow. That is a lot of loneliness. But as we're saying to cast your friendships wide, we're not calling you to choose anybody to just go out there and find any old person remember how mom and dad used to say stay away from the bad kids yeah that's kind of what i'm talking about stay away from the bad kids we want to be around people we want to encircle ourselves with people that encourage us in our faith that don't steer us in the wrong direction don't steer us into saying things doing things and thinking things that are against his will. Students in the room, kids in the room, are those you hang out with encouraging you in your faith? Um, or are they directing you to websites 
that aren't good, apps that aren't good, TV shows that are against God's will and his word? Do they encourage you in going to confirmation on Wednesday night or Sunday school on Sunday morning or youth group on Wednesday, or do they criticize you? we got to pay attention to who we put around us. King Solomon said this in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 13, 20. If you walk with the wise, you become wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. This made me think of um, how sometimes we don't realize the negative impact somebody had in our life, unfortunately, until until they're out of our life. Maybe we moved away, they moved away, they switched jobs, we switched schools, something like that. We're not really hanging out anymore. And we go, in hindsight, that person really pulled me down. I swore when I was around them. I, I talked about dirty things when I was around them. They maybe weren't that great for me. The challenge is to think about that kind of impact, that kind of negative impact, not just in hindsight being 2020, but while it's happening. The closer you are to someone, the more you're likely that you are to have their habits. I love it when you see like the 90-year-old couple and they look alike, their hair is alike, they walk alike, Uh, They talk just the same, right? They're so close. They've been together for 70 years that it's almost like they're twins because we become who we are around. A professor from Harvard University did a study, and he found out, he studied these people over 30 years And he found out that 95% of our success or failure in life is determined by the people we habitually associate with. So if you are around unsuccessful people, you're going to be unsuccessful. If you're around successful people, you're going to be more likely to be successful. If you're around ungodly people, you're going to be ungodly. If you're, going to be a, if you're around doubters who criticize the Bible or the Christian faith or Jesus, you're going to do the same. If you hang around people who believe in Jesus, trust the Bible, trust the church, and trust his word, you're going to trust it as well. Jesus committed to community, and he calls us to be around those who encourage us in our faith as well. That's number one. Number two, there may be no more important predictor of future you than to look at the community of current you. This made me think of the Three Stooges. Some of you might be too young to remember this. Um, Larry, Curly, and Mo. I'm not so sure they were good for each other. They were very funny, They are hysterical to watch, but they beat on each other a lot. I'm not so sure they were good for each other. What about those you hang out with? Are they good for you? Or are they pulling you down? We need to identify those who are the people we are allowing into our lives to influence us. One of my best friends lives in Colorado. We talk every couple months And we influence each other. We encourage each other. We lift each other up. Every single time I talk to him, I have a to-do list. Like, read this book, check out this website, check out this ministry, check out this radio program or this podcast. We encourage one another. What about those around you? Are they encouraging you in your faith? As we read earlier from 1 Corinthians 15, Verse 6, we read, He appeared, Jesus appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time. Jesus is alive. He's walking. He has marks in his hands and his feet from the crucifixion. But he's alive and he's walking and he shows up to these people that were his followers. 500, he proves that he's resurrected 
It's his close followers. We read in Luke chapter 10, verse 1, the Lord, the Lord Jesus, appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he is about to go. So Jesus didn't have just the 12 that he was training up. He had another 72 that he was training up to be pastors, to be missionaries, to go and share the truth. He was influencing others. Are you influencing others in a good way, in a godly way, sharing your faith, sharing uh, what the latest podcast you've heard, a Christian podcast or, or message or thing you've read in God's Word, the thing you've read in the Bean Challenge. Are you influencing others? Then Jesus had the 12, and a crazy bunch they were, right? An insane group of people that weren't all perfect, right? Um, Sean and I right now are watching The Chosen. Have any of you heard of the miniseries The Chosen? Uh, the Chosen, it's amazing. It's awesome. You can watch it on thechosen.tv or on their app. They are making the life of Jesus over eight series. It's all crowdfunded. The first um, season of eight shows is done, and they are in the filming of season two. They hope to make eight seasons of eight shows, translating it into every language around the world, showing it all over the world. Um, they've raised over $35 million already, uh, and um, they're raising more money for season three. It's awesome. We were watching it the other night, and Jesus calls Matthew the tax collector. Now think about this. Matthew was a Jew, but he was working for the Romans because he was a tax collector. So the Jews all hated him because he was working for the Romans. The Romans hated him because he was a Jew. And everybody else hated him, including, according to the show, I'm not so sure, but um, they, they kind of fill out the story some. It's not just what's in the gospel. They kind of uh, fill out some other things that might be possible. According to the show, his parents reject him. Why would his parents reject him? Because he's a tax collector. He's stealing from the people. And it's that guy that Jesus calls out of his tax booth. And Peter flips out and starts yelling at, at Jesus, what in the world are you doing? This is Matthew, the tax collector. And Jesus says this great line that they have on t-shirts, get used to different. Get used to different. Jesus calls all kinds of people, you and me. We're not perfect. We're not holy we don't do everything right, but he calls us. And he has called all of us at Shepherd of the Hills to be in community with one another. And he calls us into being in smaller groups. Jesus had his 500, his 72, his 12, his small group, his posse. I encourage you to have a small group of Christians that are encouraging each other. You could read the book together. You can join one of the small groups that we have. And then Jesus even had his closer group, Peter, James, and John. All throughout the Gospels we read about, then Peter, James, and John went with Jesus here and there, or they went and prayed with him. It's all about community, about relationships. And it's not going to be perfect. Your community won't always be easy. It won't always be perfect. What happened to Jesus? Judas uh, betrayed him. Peter denied him. Matthew got paid to lead the Pharisees to him. Uh, or Judas did, sorry. Craziness, right? Craziness. And maybe some of you are damaged from past relationships and so you kind of hunker down you'd rather be at home with your netflix or your video game or your tv show and you're not so sure you want to venture out and have close friendships again you're having a hard time doing that because you've been 
hurt in the past. I understand. I am, have been there. But God calls us to be in community, to share our faith with others, to lift each other up, and to have a small group of people where we're praying together, we're reading God's word together, and we're encouraging one another, as the Bible says, spurring one another on towards love and good deeds. So all of us need to ask this question. Is my community pointing me closer to Jesus? Not Greenville, not Hortonville, not the Fox Valley, but is your community, your friendships, your relationships, think about the most influential three people in your life. Are they helping you in your walk with Jesus? Are they encouraging you in your walk with Jesus? Or are they encouraging you to do ungodly things, to think things that are against his word? Are they steering you away from Jesus? Earlier, we read from Samson, from Proverbs. We also hear in Ecclesiastes 4.9, he says, Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. We need each other in our walk with Jesus. As we look to Jesus, our target, our leader, our director, we take on this spiritual habit this keystone habit of community, of relationships. And we give thanks that Jesus came to be in relationship with us, to forgive us, and to call us to be his children. And it's not going to be perfect. Church isn't going to be perfect. Try to find a perfect church. They don't exist. Small group is not going to be perfect. They don't exist. Perfect families. Anybody got one? No, they don't exist, right? But we're called to be in relationship. It was a sad week for Texas, wasn't it? Really sad week. I used to live in Texas. I, I laughed as a northerner when I first got down there, and it would get below 32, and they would put these signs out in the parking lot of my apartment complex. Leave your water running. Leave your water running? Okay. Okay. Leave your water running because pipes freeze in Texas if it's below 32. Well, it got too cold in Texas this week. Even water running didn't keep their pipes from freezing. And many of them were without power. And you saw, I saw this one guy who had built a fire in his house. No fireplace. It was on like this metal... Um, furnace thing, vent, like, I don't know if that's safe, but uh, built a fire, built a fire out of his little toddler daughter's gate that's supposed to keep her from going down the steps, falling down the steps, because that's the only wood he had. And so they're trying to stay warm. We like fires in Wisconsin, right? We like sitting outside at campfires or in the house when it's cold. What happens if you take a coal, a nice red hot coal out of that fire and set it way over here. Within a few minutes, that coal is no longer red hot. It is black and it's pretty much done flaming. And then you put it back in the fire and it heats right back up again because it's in the fire and they need each other. We need each other. If you're trying to do your Christian faith all by yourself, you're going to fizzle out. You need other Christians to encourage you and lift you up. God, Jesus, the Savior, committed to community, and may we as well. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love for us, your grace, your mercy. We thank you for sending Jesus to be one of us, for gathering his close group of friends, the 12 apostles. They weren't perfect, uh, but you called them to be among the Savior, to encourage the Savior, to lift him up, and for him to influence and encourage them. 
Lord, may we as well be people of community, um, caring for one another, caring for each other in, in small group, encouraging each other in our relationship with you as families as we read the Being Challenge together. And Lord, as uh, relationships are sometimes difficult, may we not withdraw from relationships, but stand up again as you call us to be a light in the, in the darkness. Lord, we thank you for this model, and we thank you ultimately for your sacrifice, the payment for our sins. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. encourage you to stand as we continue with our congregational prayers. They're printed for you in your worship folder. Um, some special things we're praying for this week, just our, our being challenge. We're also giving thanks for, uh, we're celebrating with Robbie and Emily uh, with their new baby son. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this week, we thank you for the Bean Challenge, for the many, many people in our congregation and beyond who are reading the book together as families, as couples, uh, as friends. We pray, Lord, with, with Robbie and Emily Cumber, we give, them, we give you thanks for their new baby son. We thank you, Lord, for him. We pray that as they bring him to the waters of baptism, that he would be claimed as your child, and that he would grow up to be a mighty man of God. We will thank you, Lord, for the COVID-19 vaccine. We pray that it would continue to wipe this virus out from our world. We pray for its safety, for no long-term side effects for anyone who receives it. We pray for its effectiveness. Lord, we lift up those brothers and sisters in Christ who, some of them still without power, many of them without clean water, um, some with now damaged homes because of frozen pipes bursting. Lord, we, we thank you for your provision for us. We thank you for the many nonprofits stepping up to help those in Texas and our government as well. We continue to pray for the Yorchek family at the loss of Steve's father to COVID-19. We pray that you would give them your comfort, your peace. We continue to pray for others who are battling COVID-19, for Josh Dillenberg's mother who's hospitalized. We pray for Pam and Travis Dorn who are battling COVID. And we pray for Pam's, Pam's mom as well, Alice. We pray for those facing medical testing, Gary Shockman, Amber Selly, and Jim Platt. We pray, Lord, that the doctors and nurses would figure out the problems going on and you would heal them. We pray, Lord, for those who recover from illness and surgeries, Anita Pepke, Dwayne Matz, Carol Breyer, and Karen Much. We continue to lift up those who daily battle cancer in their in their bodies dave miller and judy elliott dorothy lowenstein and julie baxter lord i give you thanks for every single person in this room for those who are listening online you know what's going on in their life i pray lord that you would encourage them if they're struggling with depression or anxiety may they cast their cares on you if they're struggling in their marriage lord May they come to you and humble themselves to show love for each other as you have first shown us. Lord, if people are struggling with work or unemployment, Lord, we know that you care, that, that our worries are your worries, and that you care. But you call us to cast our cares on you, and we thank you that your yoke is easy and light. All of this we lift up to you, and we pray the family prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Just a couple of reminders for you. I encourage you to fill out that little yellow card. There's a member side and a guest side. You can drop those in the boxes on your way out. There's also an offering box on each side. If you brought an offering, uh, we'd love for you to drop that in there. If you are a member of Shepherd of the Hills and you haven't yet picked up your offering envelopes for 2021, they're right outside the door to the right. Also, if you had your picture taken for the pictorial directory like a thousand years ago, it feels like, uh, well, okay, like a year ago, a little over a year ago, um, we do have those pictorial directories as well. Those are right outside to the right. Those listening at home, we do have drive-up communion from 11 to 12 if you would like to receive uh, communion that way. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. As Pastor Chad was preaching on community, um, it is reflected in us as followers of Christ, as it is in the triune God of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, that we are to be in fellowship as well. So as a community, as the Church of Shepherd of the Hills, and as we go out into our community and, and serve as the body of Christ, let us seek fellowship. And though we are not alone with Jesus, we are also not alone with each other. We have each other to count on. that you will be with me when I'm standing in the fire I will not be overcome and through the valley of the shadow I will
restore Through these trials You've always been faithful You bring healing to my soul I am not alone Oh, I am not alone You will go before me You will never leave me I am not alone Have a great week.